Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following me as I explore the wide world of pens. This is the vintage world of pens. We're looking at three incredibly good examples of the Parker Vacuumatic. And this is not just a video about these three pens, but it's about how they came to be here on the turntable, held up by crabs. A gentleman reached out to me on Instagram, Adian Chow, and said he would like to restore some vacuumatics and he wondered if I had any that needed restoration. Of course I did. So we each had chatted back and forth and I sent him some pens and we had more dialogue and eventually these three pens were returned to me in extremely good working order. And one of the things to make note of is these pens were not polished. Nothing is done to them other than replacing the diaphragm so they could be filled. So considering their age, which is well over 70 to 80 years old, they look incredibly good. So we're going to delve into a little bit of the history of the Vacuumatic. We're going to have a Zoom call with Adian and hear his stories, which I think would be quite interesting. So stay tuned, and you'll get to see more. We're going to let the crabs rotate. Let him give you a wink and continue on. We see in front of you three pens, which I think we need to put in historical perspective. So in the late 1920s, Parker was three in the big pen market behind Waterman and Schaefer was in the lead by quite a bit. Their balance pen here in the middle was an extremely successful model and they made tons of varieties of them and sold them for a number of years. The flagship Parker model was the dual fold which was getting kind of long in the tooth and they needed a new pen, something to excite the market and get buyers interested and they came out with the Vacuumatic. So a unique filling system, this stacked celluloid that is a unique material that they used, the aero clip, a lot of things came into play with this model to help them gain market share. And we all know how important market share is in any type of retail product. In looking at these pens, I think the other interesting attribute is they all have a fairly large gold nib on them. You can see the old dual fold was fairly simplistic in how it was laid out. And one of the things they also added was the aero design onto the nib with uh, most of the vacuumatics. And I like the fact that the section's the same material. And of course, Schaefer's have always known for their kind of large, impressive nibs. All of these nibs are fairly stiff. They did make some with some soft inflectness to it, but I don't have any. But Parker made hundreds of models during the lifespan of the vacuumatic series. And they also imported the Vacuumatic filling system into a refresh of the dual fold. And we see here it has longitudinal stripes, a similar pattern, a little bit wider stripes, but they used it a lot. And here's an example of another style for the pen, obviously much smaller. And you can see a nice color in those rings. So you may ask uh, what vacuumatics I have, and these are the ones that I have that are fairly complete. And most of them are restored to working order. You can see the great variety of this stacked resin, the many, many shapes that they used. You know, you have your chrome-plated trim. You also have a variety of, of bands that are on the pens. Here's the only real set that I have with a matching pen and pencil. And we have the puppy in with me in the pen room, and she's not happy. So that's what they look like. Hopefully, you're enjoying this visual review of some of the vacuumatics that I have. So I chose this pen to explore the details of this Parker Vacuumatic 
I think this is a nice representative sample. Parker did an excellent job with that Art Deco design of that clip, the arrow clip. First pen to start using it. Just a standard plain band at the bottom of the cap. Could be where you might put some initials or a name. And then if we look at the barrel, we'll eventually come across the engraving. And we'll see it's 1942. There's a two there with some dots around it that indicate the quarter. But I'm not that concerned with the quarter. And one of the things is, I think almost all vintage pens have a little bit of uh, interesting feature details to it. So here, where the blind cap meets the barrel, it's just slightly off a little bit. And yes, those uh, circular rings may not be exactly in the right orientation. Cap takes a couple turns to come off and we see a plastic plunger because uh, in the early 40s, uh, the war made it prohibitive to make an aluminum plunger, which they would call speed line. And when I first got these pens uh, back from Adian, it was just amazing because that is about as good as I've ever felt the vacuumatic work. And we will fill this pen. And we will also take a look at the other feature that is important with vacuumatics, barrel transparency. For that, we'll bring in the LED. So I've darkened the room. It is daytime and there is a little bit of sunlight out there. And it again, I'm impressed with how the LED brings out those bands, you know, black bands and then a, a golden or brown band that has some pearlescence in it. And if we play the LED light through the pen, we'll see a little bit of transparency, then we have the filling mechanism. And then we have this huge ink capacity here. And it, this has wonderful transparency, no staining over the many years that it may have been in use, or maybe not used much at all. I think it's time for some ink and nib on paper. Here's the Aiden's uh, writing sample. Looks like there's a decent amount of uh, softness to that nib. And he uses the same ink on all of his pens when he tests them. So obviously we're not going to worry about that. We're going to use this. It's in the Brown family. And I've had some really nice success with these Birmingham inks and uh, some different types of pens. Here's the color card. Yes, it is in the dusty brown family. You know, Birmingham is known for their dusty colors, but uh, when you do the chromatography, you'll see that it does have a fair amount of water resistance. Interesting uh, push up there, a little bit of like bluish purple, and then nothing, 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 and then <laughs> a really interesting green, light green band at the very top. Let's see how it works in the pen, and we're gonna see how we fill the pen. So now we're ready to fill the pen. So let's prepare the pen, removing the cap. Takes a little bit over one turn, that's nice. Unscrew the blind cap to expose the plunger. So we're ready for the ink. I always keep the lid on as long as possible and put it on as quickly as possible because you never know. So we're gonna insert it down to about halfway up the section and do about five or six pumps. You heard some air come out in the first one, that's good. And I think we're full. I had previously filled it and didn't get a good video. But now we did, and I think we're ready to write with it. So now I usually do a little bit of an editorial comment on the pen. And one of the things that is obviously apparent, it's not a large pen, it's on the small side. And we'll show you the dimensions. The key attribute, which we saw in the dimensions, is uh, it does post very well, and it makes for a comfortable length posted, and that's nice. That section is very small, But with a light pen like this, I don't mind it. You don't feel the thread, so you can hold it anywhere you want. 
Yeah, that nib is also a little bit small again, but that's in keeping with the dimensions of the pen. To me, writing with vintage is always a pleasant experience. They're just unique nibs. You know, some are soft, some are not. Uh, when I inked this up for the first time and wrote with it, it wrote great first time and it is written continuing to write well. A tribute to Adian's uh, restoration. And I'm always impressed with the way this pen looks. Somebody could look at this pen and think it was made yesterday, not, you know, 70 plus years ago. So let's see how that mud puddle ink works in this vintage nib. A new ink in an old pen. So the first thing to me is this ink looks good, much better than I expected. And it is kind of on the light side, but this pen puts down a nice generous line and that ink dries almost instantaneously on this Fabriano paper, which is not quite as coated as Rhodia and certainly not coated like Tomo River. And I like it for that reason. I enjoy this pen to write with. And that's the most important part to me of writing with a fountain pen. Do you enjoy writing with it? Now we're going to do some visuals because I uh, took a look at this pen rotating because I thought it would be fun. We're going to look at some visuals and then we're going to bring Aiden on and he's going to talk about his restorations, his passion for pens, and I think that when you're done, you might want to contact Aideen if you're interested in vintage or you have some vintage that you would like to restore. Hi, my name is Aiden Chow. Um, I'm a new fountain pen restorer and I've just restored Chris's three Parker Vacumatics. Um, I've been doing fountain pen and fountain pen restoration, especially in the vintage world for about a year now. Um, I've been able to gain a lot of experience over the last few months out of a quarantine passion, a quarantine project uh, because of my interest in penmanship which led to me discovering vintage fountain pens, which were quite affordable with gold nibs. And as a person who's relatively young for the hobby, I've been able to build upon my youth with a lot of experience from the help of many mentors, from the help of the community, and been able to learn and restore pens at a very rapid rate, which has been extremely helpful in, in my uh, pen collecting journey as well, because I've been able to use this hands-on experience to build upon my own knowledge of fountain pens and how they work in their history. And it's just been amazing. And it's been an amazing journey being able to connect with a bunch of fountain pen users and evangelizing people to begin to use and rediscover vintage fountain pens, which have been lost in time. And I think the more we have young people start 
carrying the torch for vintage fountain pen restoration, the more of a legacy these pens that have stood up so well uh, to the test of time uh, will be carried forward. And I am looking forward to doing this for many years in the future. And I'll be happy to restore any of your pens. And the more pens I restore, I just view that as bringing the soul back into an item that has been lost to time. And I'm very happy to do so. And it's my privilege to do so. So my passion for fountain pens was really derived from my love of penmanship. As you've seen in the video, Chris's writing sample that I did for him shows my love for cursive penmanship, which has become a really lost art. And I decided that the best way to pursue this was by using a fountain pen. So using by doing the old craft, using the old tools. So the first pen that I ever saw, the first vintage pen was this one. This is a Parker Golden Web Vacumatic. In terms of function, it's the same as Chris's Vacumatics, but this has just that beautiful different sort of celluloid that's unique to this pen. And this is, pen is what got me inspired into collecting vintage pens, specifically Parker's. At the time, I did not want to delve that far into the deep end of pen collecting as that is quite a rare and desirable pen. So I decided to opt for an alternative, having the same color scheme, but with a different model, which is a Schaefer Balance, which was much more affordable at that time. And this pen with its gold nib really sparked my interest and love into vintage fountain pens. From this pen, I started collecting a bunch of different pens, but really found me at home with the brand Parker, which is really what I love. And this is the first Parker that I got was this Parker 51 with its hooded nib. This pen is an absolutely amazing writer, which got me kickstarted on the marvels of Parker. From there, I was able to acquire a vacuumatic, much like Chris's, in this brown pearl celluloid color, in the stacked celluloid, which I thought was absolutely amazing. And getting that first vacuumatic was what really inspired me to pursue repairing pens, because I knew vacuumatics were a challenge to fix, and I really wanted to learn how to do it. My curiosity led me to finally acquire my Golden Web, which led into collecting a bunch more Parker Vacumatics in all different colors. And the beauty of Vacumatics is this one in particular is an Azure color Vacumatic, but there's hundreds and hundreds of different variations, which leads to a perpetual journey of collecting. And now as I've gotten more into collecting fountain pens, I've been able to get some, get my hands on some of the more uh, desirable models as well, which I recommend everyone check out because the hobby is really about the challenge of the hunt, which is what I enjoy so much about it. This is one of those pens that really challenged me to find. It's a Parker Royal Challenger, one of the rarer models that Parker produced with the sword clip, which is quite desirable in the red herringbone pattern. This pen took me a long time to find and the hunt is really, really what makes this hobby fun for me. Being able to research a pen, then acquire it, then test it and learn even more about it through hands-on use is what's really amazing about that hobby. And being able to just have a range of pens to explore from the first Parkers in the dual fold line to the early vacuumatics, like the lockdown fillers, to the button fillers, like the Royal Challenger, to its successors, the Parker 51s and onwards, is really what shows the development of tastes, the development of style, the development of eras that we see in fountain pen production. And it's just this history and this art form that's the creation of all these different types of beautiful celluloids and the craftsmanship that goes into every pen that I like to bring back from the dead pretty much is what I enjoy and savor about this hobby. Yeah, I started Vintage Pen Co. USA to cater towards the interests and hobby of a collector. I started as a collector 
and acquire in a penman. That's what I was uh, getting into the hobby to do. And restoring came as an accidental discovery for me. And I've really been able to delve into that and really want to help out beginners like I was a year ago, as well as seasoned fountain pen connoisseurs like Chris be able to elevate their hobby with a new pen. I think every single pen is a different treasure. And if you have that treasure, I would be able to make it um, right like new again. I think that's one of the main things that I pride myself upon is being able to restore a pen back to its deserved glory. And I think every single fountain pen deserves the chance to be to have its youth reignited in itself and be able to service a new owner and bring, bring writing joy to its new owner. And I think my approach to business is very personal. I love to connect with every single client. And if you need a pen restored, I will treat you as a fellow collector and a fellow friend and a fellow penman. And it is my absolute pleasure to be able to cater towards every single one of my customers and take care of their pens and take care of them because I pride myself on small business. And one of the main virtues of small business is having a personal connection with the people that make it possible. So without, um, without any hesitation, I'll be able to, to cater towards your pen, your fountain pen journey and try to make it as smooth as possible, as enjoyable as possible, and forge a successful and amicable relationship with you as a friend and a customer. Thank you guys all so much for watching the entire video. It's been an absolute pleasure talking with Chris and talking to you. Um, again, it would be my absolute pleasure and honor and privilege to be able to bring one of your pens back to life. Feel free to contact me anytime for any pen needs, especially in the vintage world. And I would like to close out with a quote what, uh, during a discussion with me and one of my clients. He said, saving parts of the future by preserving parts of the past is what you do. And each pen I'm able to sell now is a gift and therefore be present. Each pen that I'm able to sell now is a gift. And I think uh, one of the greatest gifts that we have is that these vintage fountain pens with its excellent craftsmanship have lasted us to enjoy 80 years, 90 years later. And I would be very happy to bring it back to life for you. So without uh, further ado, thank you very much. And I hope to see you soon and talk with you soon.